Welcome to the series Against All Odds, Crafting a Career in the Arts. According to Statistics Canada, around 19% of the population are living with some form of disability that affects their level of freedom, independence, or quality of life. Of that population, a percentage are invisibly disabled, which means they may look and act healthy, but are living with a chronic condition. Having an invisible disability could happen to anyone at any time and can include autoimmune diseases, brain injuries and strokes, chronic pain, mental or psychological disorders, among others. People with invisible disabilities may not be able to work a full-time schedule or may need a modified schedule based on how they feel. But having an invisible disability doesn't mean living your dream is completely impossible. In this series, we will share with you stories of invisibly disabled professional craft artists who work or sell their art in Edmonton. We have also included valuable community resources that are important for any artist who wants to begin their career. I'm Amy, an award-winning artist and filmmaker who is invisibly disabled. And together with my husband, Tanner, I will be sharing the stories of local artists with invisible disabilities. And I will take you to different places in the community to show you where support is available. It is our hope that with this series, anyone looking to begin their art career will know where the supports and resources exist in our community. We also hope if you are invisibly disabled, the stories of the artists included in this series will help you see how it is possible to have a career in the arts or inspire you to explore the artistic medium you have been curious about. Edmonton has many amazing supports for artists. In this episode, we'll be talking to some of the community supports available, the City of Edmonton and the Alberta Craft Council. Today we're at the Alberta Craft Council as part of our resources for Edmonton artists. We're gonna find out all about the Craft Council and what they have to offer. We're also going to show you some of the artists featured in their gallery, and who knows, maybe next time we'll see your work in here. My name is Jenna Stanton, and I'm the Executive Director of the Alberta Craft Council. The Alberta Craft Council just celebrated its 42nd year as a not-for-profit charitable organization in Alberta. So we work to promote, advocate, and support craft artists from across the province and really promote craft culture. So we are connecting with artists and hearing about what their hopes are for their careers and we're trying to pass that knowledge about their careers, their process, their techniques, and their passions to the public who visit our spaces in Alberta. Our main location is in Edmonton and we have two gallery spaces and a shop that has over 175 Alberta craft artists from emerging to world-renowned professionals. And we also do Alberta Craft Magazine, we have a podcast, and a lot of great content online. We just started an online shop this past year. And we have a newer space in Calgary as well, and that has a gallery space and a shop with about 80 artists in it. I am a ceramicist actually, so I went to school in Calgary at the Alberta College of Art and Design for ceramics and I came to the Alberta Craft Council because I wanted to learn more from artists themselves about different career paths. I think what we do for our members is create space and opportunity for them to have their craft available to the public. We're really just trying to get our artists, encourage them to tell their stories and share their skills and work and creativity with us and through us, the public. And that can take shape in a lot of different ways from professional development opportunities or just one-on-one -on -one career consultations that we have with people or conversations about 
what gets them excited. And if artists are interested in becoming a member, we have a number of different membership levels. We actually just created a new one for customers called a craft lover. And that's a really good way to just get the magazine and get information on what's happening here. And for artists, we have a general membership, which isn't juried. So anyone can join us at that level as well. And we send out a bi-weekly e-news so you can hear about all the opportunities and calls for entry that we have or that we hear about. And we also have a professional level, which is for artists who are interested in selling in our social enterprise retail as well. For us, it's really important to be a space that's not only for the number of world-class professional craft artists that are represented here from across Alberta, but also to create space for emerging artists. So one of the exhibitions that we're really excited about having is our biannual Coming Up Next Emerging Show, which is actually the only emerging show that's national for craft in Canada. I think emerging, like people often think of it as someone who's young, but I think a lot of people have gone to craft through the pandemic and have started something new too, where they might be emerging at 50 or 60 and that's totally fine too. And I think, I don't know, the craft community is so welcoming that everyone knows you can't, like that you need each other to learn because there's too much to learn in every medium. So how do you get started selling in the store? I think for us, we're working on different approaches and making a phased entry so that you don't have to be a member right away to find out maybe if your work gets past the first phase, then we ask for physical samples of the work because with craft, we really need to see all aspects of it in its entirety so that we can really give feedback. And the, with the Craft Council, we're not just interested in a yes or no we're really looking at the work to try and provide people with an opportunity to get feedback because not everyone has that opportunity. Not everyone has gone through a course or a formal education in craft. So we want to give them space to get some great feedback from a roster of artists that we bring together to look at the work. And it might not be that this is the location for their work, but we hope that everyone who goes through that process gets some kind of encouragement and support for either updating their techniques or pointing them to workshops that might help them out on specific aspects. So for me, usually it's not a forever no. It might be just not yet or with a little work or let's see how this does. And so for people who are interested in exhibitions, we have some exhibitions that are open to the general public. People don't have to be a member to apply. We're not asking for CVs or artist resumes or artist statements, because I think it's important within the mix of exhibitions that we have, that we have group exhibitions that more people are able to feel that their work is eligible to apply. And that's a really great way for a lot of people to get started. We have started a program called Craft Tours where we're really leaning into experiential craft tourism and whether we're doing hands-on workshops and make and takes out of our gallery locations with people over a few hours or bringing an artist in to do a little workshop, we're also going out into the community. So partner organizations who are having really incredible exhibitions that feature craft, we're going to places like that and getting curators to give us behind the scenes tours. We're visiting museum collections. There's so many ways that craft intersects our cultural life. And for us, craft tours and that experiential craft tourism component is something that I think can grow into one of the pillars of the Craft Council because it's really about sharing our connections with these artists, getting people together, and just building community based on the craft in our, the world around us. I think the path to becoming a professional craftsperson is partly intent. And so if that's where you want to go with your career and with your time, then developing your skills, 
I think is a really important part of that. And for craftspeople, learning is lifelong. No one ever feels like they've reached the pinnacle and they're no longer curious. There's so many wormholes to go through with any medium. And, and I think just building a network. So if you're doing markets that you have a chance to meet other artists, one of the things that's really valuable, even for professional artists, is to work as a duo in a team where you're selling with your friend at a craft sale, because they're probably likely more able to talk up your work in you than you are, and to listen to what they're saying to customers. And I think from there, just approaching galleries, looking on their websites, finding out how they do intake. So just make an appointment, do your recon, meet the community, volunteer if you can. There's a lot of great opportunities out there. Today we're at the City Arts Centre as part of our community resources for Edmonton artists. We're gonna learn all about the program and what it has to offer. Programs like these are a great alternative to taking a formal program through a university or college. They give you a chance to try out the art or craft and see if you like it. And also, they can help you decide whether you want to invest in that art vocation that you've been dreaming of. Amy and I know from personal experience that the programs offered through the City Arts Centre are both convenient and fun. Now let's go inside and chat with one of the team members and find out more about the programs. So my name is Ruthann French and I'm the Program Manager of the City Arts Centre. I am an artist and I probably wouldn't be working here if I wasn't an artist. I have a, a BFA and an MFA, and I do uh, sculpture and I do ceramics. And um, I've been working in that medium for probably about 20 years. And I'm very passionate about working um, at the City Arts Centre. And I think with any arts administration job, you have to wear lots of hats. And so I think being an artist allows, it gives me that tenacity to continue on and to overcome any obstacles that are continually coming when you're in an arts position. I'm very passionate about my job and what I do. So the City Arts Centre, we have this building that we're in right now, and um, it's kind of the hub of the City Arts Centre programs. So we have pottery in the basement and silversmithing, and then we have classrooms on the main floor, and then we have performing arts classes on the top floor. Plus we have kitchens and fine arts in this location. But we also work with the other outreach city facilities, which are the rec centers. So we have programs in all of those rec centers. So at Terwilliger Rec Center, and we have Mill Woods, and we have Jasper Place Annex, which is a little tiny facility. So we utilize a lot of the city's real estate to put our art programs into those facilities in communities. We offer courses from for three-year-olds, family courses for babies, and then we have six years old to 18 years old, which we consider our youth classes. And then we have adult classes from 18 to 60. So then over 60, we have one seniors program. So we offer classes for all ages. So the Leisure Access Program, it allows the citizens of Edmonton to access the rec centers and our programs you can take two to four courses a year through through the City Arts Centre. You apply for that um, at any city facility. This is an older building but it's been refit for a lot like since they opened it 20 years ago so it has a, um, a ramp off the back and it, we have an internal elevator. We have a, an accessible parking lot. It's easy to get in like with that's buses or for someone who's taking the bus we're accessible to bus routes we have two entrances we have a back entrance where the ramp is and then we have this this entrance the city has a website if they were going to do it online they would just they would google maybe um, city arts center or city of edmonton they also could call 311 and a 311 person could um, pull up the website for them and kind of talk to them about what we offer. And then a uh, third thing is that they could come into the City Arts Centre and talk to one of our front desk people or they could go into a rec centre. We have mostly beginner classes, but after that, the classes that are really popular, we will have a level two. So in silversmithing, in pottery, 
and a lot of times it will be um, repeating students that have been here quite a few times and then there will be a need to like they want to keep coming here and so we will have um, a level two class and same with dancing so we have level two dance also the beginner classes will accommodate a level two person so the teacher will if they have like six students that are beginners and six students that have taken the class before they will accommodate both those ranges to make sure that everybody's getting their needs met so we have a, a gamut of inst instructors that work at city arts center and they they come from all different backgrounds some of them are formally trained they have arts degrees some of them have full-time jobs that are totally unrelated to what they're teaching here they will have a government job but their passion is cooking and so we have people who teach cooking classes that's that have never been formally trained people who will come that have been doing a craft for a long time and as long as it's a proven skill set that they can show that they can do that skill then um, um, they can teach her. So to become an instructor at the City Arts Centre, there's two ways you can do that. Send just, just an inquiry and say, hi, you know, I am a painter and, you know, give me a, a brief description. And what I do is I answer those emails and then I go, will go on further to, to ask more questions and find out what that person's skill set is. Or we also have postings on the City of Edmonton job board. So if someone was looking for a job and those jobs come out like every couple of months, there might be something that we're, we're looking for, whether it's a silversmithing instructor or a painter or a dancing instructor. In this episode, you saw some places where you could learn arts and crafts, ways to become a professional artist, and other career opportunities available for artists. Follow along for more stories about Edmonton artists and resources available for you to get started in your career.